Fantastic collections from around the world, but how did they get there? Where did they find these precious memories, artifacts, and memorabilia? Collector's Catch shows you how they got there. Hello, I'm Chuck Hodge. You all remember their iconic music. You marveled at the album cover. We will show you how an item from this album cover reached into the lives of a collector in the United States and how he spoke about it with the Hollywood legend, Tony Curtis. Well, it first started off in the uh, studio in England when the Beatles were taking the photos of the Sgt. Pepper cover. And then, about 20 years later, it landed in uh, Sotheby's auction in London. And then from there, it landed in New York City at an auction. And then it also landed, finally, in the hands of me in Indianapolis, Indiana. You became interested in the Beatles. Did you become, and the Beatles performed at the Indiana State Fair. Is that when your Beatles interest began? No, actually my interest began actually a, about a month earlier. Uh, when I saw a bunch of Beatle cards fly up in the air in a uh, rainstorm, and I didn't know who they were. And once I found out who they were through my Uncle Johnny's store, I found out it was the Beatles. And then I found out they were coming to the Indiana State Fair. But because the fact is I was six years old, my mom and dad would no way let me go to the Coliseum with all those screaming fans. They probably thought because I was so, so, such a short kid anyway, I would probably get trampled. So what, what was that event? Screaming, uh, screaming girls, uh, people who I've talked to, uh, they went to the show in the grandstand and the Coliseum and they couldn't hear a thing uh, because all the kids were screaming and stuff like that. But the theme it was, was just to see the Beatles on stage. That's what was really, really cool. Well, uh, they did the uh, early show, uh, the five o'clock show at the uh, State Fairgrounds Coliseum. And also what they did, they, matter of fact, they had a press conference right after that and they were only supposed to do one show, but because of the demand, they decided to uh, cancel the Joey Chitwood show. Sorry, Joey. And they made it, uh, they made it for the 9.30 show at the uh, Grandstand. In between the two concerts at the Indiana State Fair, when they played uh, uh, the Coliseum, and then they played the Grandstand, they had a press conference. I've got the actual press pass for the, uh, the press conference, and from my research, there's less than two or three that ever, ever survived. A lot of people think about their music. What are we talking about when we talk about an album cover and different heads appearing on the cover? All four Beatles um, had an opportunity to write down their favorite famous people that they wanted on the cover. And after they took a look at it and they saw the, the common denominator, that's how these images were basically chosen to be put on the cover on the Beatles Sgt. Pepper. How did they create this image with so many famous heads? Is it, is it Photoshop? They took art, they, they took the photographs, and my guess is they probably blew them up into a larger size, and they took them and they cut them around, and they placed them on a hard board. And that's how, how they came up with the you know, different images. What did the Beatles have to do with Hollywood legend Tony Curtis? And how did a collector in Indiana, USA capture this treasure in his collection? Collector's Catch will show you how they got there.